Hello Germany, I come here to make peace. Yeah, good. What do you offer? Well, we, we can give you Poland. We already have Poland. Well, n but now for real. The Bolsheviks, they managed to seize power in Petrograd in October, or November 1917. They inherited a war. A war that was going very badly. So, they decided to end this war. Did it really go that smoothly? No. In this video more about the road to the peace treaty of Brest-Litovsk. Glad to have you back on the channel and if you happen to be new my name is Stefan, I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you and if you like that please consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. Okay little recap here, Tsarist Russia entered the first world war and fought against Germany, Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire. Especially the battles against the much more efficient German armies go very bad for Russia. Due to the war efforts, there's a food crisis at home and a bread riot in February 1917 leads to a revolution, the Tsar advocated. The succeeding provisional government continued the war against Germany and the political turmoil remained. In October, the Bolsheviks, after months of continuous agitation, seized power in the capital of Petrograd and in Moscow shortly after. Trying to live up to the promise of peace, land and bread, they enter peace talks with the central powers. But walking away from a war is not that easy. The reason why Vladimir Lenin wanted to sign a peace treaty with the central powers was pragmatic. See, after their seizure of power in Petrograd, anti-Bolshevik forces were gathering in the country and a civil war seemed to be imminent and you simply cannot fight a foreign war and a civil war at the same time. Besides that, the Russian army at the front was in disarray. We cannot fight now, our army is not good. We, we must make peace right now with well, Germany. We must fight, we must defend no, our no, revolution. No, 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 comrade. Our army is not good, we must make peace. According to Russian General Alexei Brusilov, the Russian forces were already a skeleton of an army after three months of fighting. But also the central powers, they were keen on peace in the east because the agricultural riches of the Ukraine could feed their starving masses. Ever since 1914, Germany was fighting a two-front war and now there was a chance to get rid of this two-front war. So far the German and Soviet interests coincided. Do notice that the Germans they wanted to create a weak post-war Russian state that would never be a threat in the future. As for the dates I'll stick to the new calendar this time since it was adopted by the Russians early 1918. So after the Bolshevik October Revolution, sorry, the November Revolution, the second All-Russian Congress of Soviets issued a degree on peace. And this gave them way to the international diplomatic arena. On November 26th, new Soviet commander-in-chief Nikolai Krylenko, he approached the Germans with an armistice offer and this went into effect the following day. Now here's an interesting story I read in the book of People's Tragedy written by historian Orlando Fajes. When the Bolshevik delegation was making its way to Brest-Litovsk, they were still in Petrograd and they had to go to the railway station. They realized, however, that they were missing a peasant. You know, they wanted to represent the revolution and they at least needed one peasant in their delegation. They saw an old man looked like a peasant and they basically asked him hey you want to come to Brest Litovsk with us making peace with the Germans and this man he agreed now <laughs> I read that the Germans they were like astonished by the manners of this peasant or basically the lack thereof then the peasant went by the name of Roman Stashkov um, I have no idea how it ended up with this man so if uh, if you have any theories feel free to Leave them in the comment below. On the 1st of December, the Soviet delegation led by Adolf Joff met the Germans at Bresk Litovsk, which was German HQ at that time. The city is located in present day Belarus. Back in September 1914, the Allies had pledged that they would not sign a separate peace treaty. Please join the talks, my friend. No, but, but we are allies. I mean, we were allies. No. But, but, 
the allies they were invited, but they did not respond. Two days later, a two-week ceasefire was agreed upon. Jaffa he went back to Petrograd. The Bolsheviks they used their time to spread their Bolshevik propaganda to the German forces. See, by now there was massive fraternization between the Russian and the German troops. And Trotsky hoped that there would also be a German revolution where the proletariat would rise to power. So in that sense, signing a unfavorable peace treaty wouldn't be the worst thing in the world since it will all be undone anyhow once the German revolution had taken place. On December 12th, both sides met again at Brest-Litovsk. A formal armistice was signed that would last till 14th of January. On December 22nd, the official peace talks began. The Central Powers were represented by German Secretary of State Richard von Kuhlmann, Chief of Staff on the Eastern Front Max Hoffmann, and Austrian Foreign Minister Count Ottokar von Czersinen. During the talks, Joffe repeated his demands for a treaty concluded by all involved nations, also respecting the concept of national self-determination. He borrowed these words of US President Woodrow Wilson. Now, the Germans, they weren't too keen on this, since this would mean that they had to pull out of the territories they had already conquered, the Baltics, Poland, and furthermore, in 1916, they declared the, well, not really independent Kingdom of Poland, so they were already kind of living up to the standards. Well, not really, of course. And as Bolshevik Kamienev stated, the Germans have transformed the principle of self-determination from a formula for national liberation into a disguise for annexation. The Germans and the Austrians, they weren't on the same page either, since the Austrians were kind of in a hurry because they needed food for their starving masses. The food situation in Austria Hungary was much more dire than it was in Germany. And to complicate things further, Ukraine now entered the stage. Who are you? I'm Ukraine. I come here for Germany to make separate peace with Germany. What? Interesting. What do you offer? Back in November, the Ukrainians in Kyiv had distanced themselves from the Bolshevik coup and declared the Ukrainian National Republic, in short, the UNR, also known as the Ukrainian People's Republic, but I stick to the first designation since Ukrainian People's Republic would assume it was communist, which it was certainly not, although I do believe it had some left-wing sympathies. Anyhow, they sent a Ukrainian delegation representing the Ukrainian Central Rada to Brest Litov to sign a peace treaty of their own. A pretty bold move, <laughs> these Ukrainians. And as a response to this, the Bolsheviks, they set up their communist rival government in the East Ukrainian city of Kharkiv, and it was named the Ukrainian Worker Peasant Republic. From January 9th, Leon Trotsky headed the Soviet delegation. He wanted to unmask the German intentions and he'd hoped a German revolution would occur. Now, back in Petrograd, there were heated debates about what to do among Bolsheviks, Mensheviks and left SRs. It was near the end of that month that the Worker Peasant Red Army was established and it was basically the birth of the Red Army. Lenin, for example, he was willing to accept the draconian demands of the Central Powers, where Russia would lose Finland, the Baltics, Ukraine and Poland. And others, they wanted to fight a revolutionary war against Central Powers. On January 30th, Leon Trotsky returned to Brest-Litovsk and he had a new tactic. No peace, no war. He simply refused to sign anything. Now, who did sign? Something was the Ukrainian Rada, and their government was recognized by the Central Powers. Losing patience, they, the Central Powers, signed a separate treaty with Ukraine on 9th of February. Under this so-called bread peace, Ukraine agreed to supply Germany and Austria-Hungary with a million tons of bread annually in exchange for their recognition of the Ukrainian People's Republic, UNR, that had recently declared its independence from Russia. However, by the time this was signed, the Red Army had already taken Kyiv. After a break, the delegates met again on February 6th. And Leon Trotsky, he repeated his words. No peace, no war. Trotsky and his delegates, they left the room and they left for Petrograd. 
No peace, no war. We will demobilize, we will stop fighting, but we will not sign. Men up, let's get loose. The Germans, well, they now simply decided to advance in Operation Faustschlag, also known as the 11 day war or the railway war, since basically the Germans advanced inside Russia, mostly by rail and without much fighting. As commander in chief, Hoffman wrote, the mess in the Russian army is much greater than I expected. Nobody wants to fight anymore. Yesterday, a single lieutenant and six of our men took 600 Cossacks prisoner. Hundreds of guns, cars, locomotives, wagons, a few thousand prisoners, dozens of division staffs were rounded up, all without any actual fighting. Soon, Tallinn was captured alongside 1,500 Russian guns. The Germans, they captured Minsk, they captured Narvan, they captured Kiev, and they could basically walk to Petrograd unopposed. Now, local Soviets, they organized defense squads, but most soldiers were busy making their way east. The Germans, they got them on the run. I will defend revolution. Halt. This is a very crazy war, you can just walk in. Lenin, he wanted to sign peace, but he did not have all the power on February 17th. By now, the Russians had adopted the Gregorian calendar. The Bolshevik Central Committee rejected Lenin's motion on peace. The next day, it was rejected again by a single vote. Trotsky was among the opponents. The next day, Trotsky changed his mind and the motion was carried through. On February 19th, 1918, Lenin and Trotsky, they wired to Berlin. However, there was no immediate response as the Germans, they wanted to grab as much territory as they could and marching ever more closer to the Russian capital. Petrograd was placed under a state of siege. Trotsky became the commissar of war and the Bolsheviks, they stated. All able-bodied persons of the bourgeoisie, both men and women, should be included in the battalions to dig trenches under the supervision of military specialists and should work under the eyes of the Red Guard in case of refusal or opposition. Shoot them down! On February 23rd, the Germans finally replied demanding the talks to resume at Brest-Litovsk. The treaty was to be signed on the 3rd of March, giving the Russians 48 hours to reply. Their terms. They, the Germans, demanded Russia recognize the independence of the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, as well as Finland, Ukraine and Georgia and withdraw any forces still on the ground. They insisted on across the board demobilization and disarmament, the payment of indemnities and the cessation of propaganda in the areas under central power control. And in the meanwhile, the Germans advanced. Lenin wanted to sign now, as he stated. It is a question of signing the terms now or signing the death sentence of the Soviet government three weeks later. And here we see Lenin's pragmatic nature as well as his willing to swim against the current. Some fellow Bolsheviks called him a German spy and there were non-Bolsheviks, I'm talking about left SRs and Mensheviks who were willing to go down fighting. As the German deadline was approaching, Lenin finally secured a slim majority in the Soviet Executive Committee and Berlin was telegrammed. The Russians accepted the German terms. Since the Germans were reaching the capital, it was on February 26th that the Bolsheviks decided to move the government to Moscow. As Lenin settled in the Kremlin, Trotsky remained in Petrograd to organize the Red Army. On March 3rd, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was signed. Russia lost. 34% of its population, 32% of its agricultural land, 54% of its industrial plants, 89% of its coal mines. Germany gained control of a territory stretching from the Arctic Sea to the Black Sea, inhabited by 55 million people rich in wheat, oil and other valuable resources. Thing was, the Germans still kept advancing, but soon halted. At the insistence of Talat Pasha, the treaty declared that the territory Russia took from the Ottoman Empire in the Russo-Turkish War, specifically Ardahan, Kars and Batumi, were to be returned. At the same time of the treaty, the territory was under effective control of Armenian and Georgian forces. The road to the Brest-Litovsk peace treaty was a messy road, but now the Bolsheviks could focus on the enemies within their 
borders and there were a lot also because of this deal they alienated the left SRs who would raise up against them in the summer of 1918 this would also pave the way for the red terror more on that in a future episode. Thanks to my patrons, you see on screen, and a special thanks to Joan, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rock Park, RL, and Colin Castleman. Now this video is part of a series called Revolutionary Russia. I have the playlist for you, it's right here. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, to comment, and also subscribe if you have not already. See you later.